Okay, sorry, I'm just going to just double check. Okay, so good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome, welcome to the Walkways Reef Improvement Works webinar. My name is Bumi Shikoni. I'm the Senior Project Manager for the Walkways Refurbishment Design and Delivery at the Lancaster West Nibo team. And I'll be chairing this meeting, um, this evening's meeting. I'd like to thank you all for joining us to discuss the refurbishment of Barrandon Walk, Teston Walk and Hurstway Walk Reefs. Just some quick um, housekeeping. The meeting has been recorded for residents who can make it this evening and will be put on our communication channels. Please keep um, yourself on mute unless you're speaking. We do encourage a camera on policy. So if you're comfortable with that, um, please do turn on your camera, especially when you're speaking. Next slide, please. Slide. OK, so I'm going to start off with um, a quick introduction to the Lancaster West team working on the external refurbishment of your blocks. That's the outside of the buildings themselves and the communal spaces. Many of you will have met James Caspell, Lancaster West Estate Neighborhood uh, Director, and also here today is Andres Luizu, who's Head of um, Refurbishment Design and Delivery, Alfie Peacock, um, Refurbishment Design and Delivery Project Officer, Janet Hall, um, the Heat Network Engagement Manager, Nazra Ali, um, Project Support Officer. You probably hear from most of us um, before the end of the evening. I I will now hand over to Caroline Hall, who will introduce the Kara Kusevich Carson Architects team, the architects working on the refurbishment of the walkways. Caroline. Hi there, thanks for me. Uh, so yeah, for those who haven't met us before at some of the previous engagement events, we are Kara Kusevich Carson Architects. Please feel free to use KCA. It's a lot easier. Um, so we are, as for me mentioned, we're leading the refurbishment design process for the walkways buildings. We're leading a multidisciplinary team, so that's including cost consultants and engineers. And this evening we have myself and Alva and Sean on the call. So we'll be presenting images to help further explain the roof works and what impact these will have on your buildings and your homes. Uh, just as a quick mention, myself, Laura, uh, myself, Sean, Lara, who's shown here, she's one of our architects, and Tajir will be at the engagement event on Thursday afternoon. Uh, at NKRC, where we will be able to answer more questions on the roof works for you. If you are available, please do come down to see the designs and the models, and we'd love to have more one to one discussions with you. Um, I'm going to hand back to Bumi now quickly. I think she's going to talk through the agenda. Yes. Um, so, in terms of the agenda, um, the meeting will last um, an hour and will run as follows Lancaster West Estate Neighborhood Director James Caspell will give a brief introduction. He'll be followed by Kara Kusevich Carson, architect Casey, who will present the roof improvement works at Brandon Walk, Test and Work, and Hersway Walk. Uh, the presentation will cover what, you know, the, the roof works involve, which is the thermal improvement of the roof deck. The replacement of the roof lights in the communal spaces, as well as the current thinking on the material finishes and color of the parapet, the external wall insulation, the terrace screens and pergola. There will be an opportunity to ask questions and share your views, so feel free to put your questions and comments in the chat or raise your hand um, to ask directly. Um, for any late comments, um, a little bit of housekeeping, the meeting has been recorded and will be um, posted on our communication channels for residents unable to attend. I will ask um, everyone to keep their microphones on mute unless they're speaking. We do encourage the camera on policy, so if you're comfortable with that, please do turn on your cameras, um, especially when you're speaking. So without further ado, I will now hand over to James Caspell. Next slide. Thank you, uh, Bumi, and thanks to residents joining us and those who are watching on repeat, as they say. Um, I'm going to give a very brief introduction and hand over to Casey. I'm going to talk us through some really exciting uh, 21st century model designs uh, for Hurstbury Walk, Teston Walk and Barrenden Walk. Um, first, I'm just going to do a bit of a recap in terms of where we are in the process. So we obviously uh, curated a number of ideas uh, shortly after the Grenfell Tower tragedy. Uh, and certainly in spring 2018 started to crystallise those into what the walkways um, could look like. Um, we've since been on a, a together a fundraising drive and secured uh, support from a, a number of levels of government and of course the council uh, to ensure uh, that we could deliver on those initial ideas. 
Um, we are entering now what we call uh, phase two of the emergency preferences and choices uh, for the walkways, having taken your initial design ideas and started to distill those. And we're going to be focusing today and in the weeks ahead specifically on the roof improvement works. They might say, well, why are we focusing on the roof and, and not everything uh, in the uh, in, in totality? And there's various reasons for that. Um, we found on the uh, east side of the estate, certainly at Camelford Court and now at Clarendon Walk and, and Talbot Walk, um, that there was a, a real opportunity to bring forward uh, the roof works to deliver thermal uh, improvement. And certainly for those of you living in Barrendon Walk at the moment, you'll be more than aware uh, that the skylights or AOVs, as, as we sometimes call them, uh, are beyond their uh, usable life and are currently uh, jammed open. And you'll all be aware across all the walkways what that means in terms of water coming in, certainly uh, in the winter months. So a real opportunity for us, thanks to some grant funding that we've secured from central government through a scheme called the Social Housing Decarbonisation Fund, uh, to bring forward uh, these roof works, deliver uh, sizable improvements in terms of the thermal performance, particularly of those of you on the top floor, uh, bring some uh, degree of aesthetic improvement and also some of the ideas of what uh, external wall insulation and various other aesthetic improvements might uh, bring to the walkways uh, and crucially secure uh, the roof so that if you know, res residents choose to, we can look to install solar photovoltaic panels, which will mean you're generating your own local clean green energy uh, on the roofs of your uh, blocks. So we are going through a process at the moment and all residents are uh, invited to take part in helping us select our first main contractor for the walkways. Now the walkways, for obvious reasons, given proximity to Grenfell Tower, has always been a key focus and over a third of all tenants, or tenanted homes I should say, have had full internal refurbishment. So this marks the first main block uh, refurbishment um, it will come ahead of the windows program, the external wall insulation program. We are piloting uh, various options on those uh, in various uh, properties in the three um, walkways. Uh, and we're looking to uh, start on site in August. And so that will mean uh, many months of work. Uh, and we'll talk about how we're going to deliver that work and what it might look like. And no doubt concerns around disruption. Uh, but as well as improving the roofs, it will mean that those of you with the uh, top floor terraces will also benefit from improved balconies. And we're going to show uh, a range of options in terms of what that might look like. So we have made sure that in the design, uh, ably supported by KCA uh, and, and Langley, who are the roof specialists, that it would absolutely dovetail in with the future works we're looking to do to the whole block. Um, so we can talk a little bit about that but really gives us the first opportunity to start to bring a sizable improvement to the thermal performance of your homes. And I think crucially in terms of the communal areas, ensure that they're weatherproof and watertight. So I'll stop there and hand over to KCA who are gonna talk us through their designs. So we've got, we've got Alva kicking off, I believe, um, with the building envelope. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Alva Reynolds. I work for KCA, as, as um, Caroline gave us a nice introduction. So I just want to specifically talk about the roof works. Um, the, the main focus for the roof works is at the upper levels, um, as the name it suggests. It's, as James suggested or touched on, it, it, it's uh, focused around the, the thermal properties, so that make the buildings warmer fire standards to improve any any AOVs or smoke extract issues that you have with the, the roof lights on top of the atriums, and also to bring the energy performance of the buildings to, to modern standards. Um, so as I said, they're generally located at the top levels of the building, so the roof and then the upper level terraces. Um, I think there's a bit of a summary here, but essentially we're going to introduce a, a, a thicker level of insulation at roof level but then also introduce a, a low wall around the perimeter of the roof to provide a safe and secure uh, roof space. And then as, as, as James touched on, the, the, the current roof lights or the, the, the glazing at the top of the atriums are not fit for purpose. They're single glazing, which leaks out any of the heat, but also those AOVs that in some cases have, have defaulted to open uh, leak in uh, rain and are a bit of a, a bit of a hindrance. So we're going to re-review them, replace the single glazed roof lights and install 
install new double glazed um, with integrated AOVs, which are openable vents for both smoke extract and thermal control. So to, to help um, uh, have a maintained warm or cold temperature within the communal, communal walkways. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and this is a, a just an image which kind of provides a bit of a focus uh, for, for what the roof works entail. So if you go through the numbering there, one to seven, uh, number one talks about this new low protective wall, which we're introducing around the perimeter of the roof. Number two there, it looks at the removal of the, the thin layer of insulation that's on the roof currently and replacing that with a much thicker uh, non-combustible uh, mineral wall, which is a thicker insulation line at the roof, which will improve uh, the not only conditions to communal walkways but those homes at the upper level. Uh, number three indicated there over the roof lights as I mentioned will remove the single glazed uh, glazing to the top of those atriums and introduce a, novel, a new double glazing with integrated uh, openable vents for both ex smoke extract but also in the summer months to remove any hot air that gets uh, protected there or collected there. And uh, number four is, is, is about actually reviewing the, the drainage strategy so the current rainwater up on the roof uh, comes down down through the buildings and we're going to look at trying to improve that uh, situation to remove any any kind of old rainwater outlets and put in new uh, new uh, rainwater outlets there. Number five is it highlights the terrace level. So the upper level terraces, um, because of the, the, the access required for these roof works, we'll be removing the glazing, which is on the side panels of the atrium between the terraces and the, the, the communal atriums. So we'll be introducing a fire rated glazing there. Um, so that, that terrace, the, the, the terraces will be introducing new pergola and dividing screens, which I think Sean will touch on a little later. Number six then is talking about that removal of the single glazed um, wall which is between the terraces and the atriums and introducing a new fire rated double glaze solution. So really improving the, the thermal envelope, which is insulation and double glazed atriums, but also a fire rated glazing between terraces and atrium spaces. And then lastly, number seven there talks about the introduction of a new structural support so when if if and when the residents or yourselves are, are are keen to introduce photovoltaics there is a structural support system which can house those photovoltaics or pv panels um, as we called uh, on there so i think just a, a quick one on what it says is is what the roof works in, involves and then as a later date which we'll talk about in a minute the later date we'll look at the kind of parapet cladding which comes at roof level which will be uh, which caroline will touch on a little later on uh, next slide, please. And I think this is actually quite a, a, a good slide to, to, to stop on and take a moment working from the sketches. There's three sketches here moving from left to right. On the left is a, is a, a kind of a, a detail that a drawing of what the existing condition is. So you can see, Sean, if you put your cursor over, you can see the, uh, the, 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 the concrete slab, a small amount of insulation, and then kind of weighted handrails that are on the roof now. The middle one is what we're proposing to install in the roof works. It's a thicker amount of insulation, which will provide that uh, the thermal condition for the units below. And then we're also so introducing a low level uh, protective wall which around which provides uh, protection to those working at height and also ensures a kind of a, a condition where the the cladding or the perfect cladding or external wall insulation can be fixed on a later date and then equally and on the top of the the the, in the middle sketch you look we can show a kind of a, a balustrade which will provide protection for those working at, at high level from falling and then from left to right the third the third uh, sketch um, shows the uh, the new possible um, <laughs> facade, which comes uh, which come at a later phase of works. Next slide, please. And then this is uh, what we've done, a computer um, generated image, which gives a bit of a summary. And, and, and this is uh, something which we'd, we'd like to get the residents input on. So these are all the aspects which we are proposing. So you see the new roof light on top of the atrium, um, the new insulation and waterproofing at roof level, um, the new uh, guarding or handrail along the at roof, at roof level. But these are all the elements which we're going to touch on a bit later in the presentation, but would like welcome the residents and your input on what the roof light colour could be, the uh, the railing finish could be and then also working with the the wider external wall uh, 
um, facades, what that what that material could be and, and, and what colour or, 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 or um, texturing it could be. And then equally at that upper level terraces, looking at what new pergola structure could be, what it looks like and how those terrace screens would finish between the terraces. So I think we're going to touch on a bit a bit of the options available uh, and for further discussion with, with yourselves, but I'll hand it back, I think, <laughs> to Caroline. Thanks, Alma. Slide, Perfect. Thanks. Um, so this slide is all about giving a bit more context to the roof works and how the roof works will interface with the wider works in the future. Now, those of you who came to the roof works engagement back in November might recall that we were requesting that specific feedback on the parapet facing materials. But following the decision to remove the parapet facing from these current works and then put them into the main refurbishment works, we're now in a position to look more comprehensively at the building materials across the whole building with you. And this, I think, is in response to some concerns raised by walkways residents that we were asking you to provide feedback on parapet materials before you had a better understanding of the wider options for the facade external wall insulation. So this is a good, we, we think this is a good thing. It, it means that we can have a much more kind of uh, comprehensive approach to, to, to the, the building external uh, facade materials. Um, so we're really showing this for illustrative purposes. We're not going to be asking you to make a, a, an informed decision on this until we get to the um, the phase two engagement properly, and we'll show much more information at that stage. Um, so we won't be asking you to make that final decision um, or preference until later in the summer. However, we did want to show you some of the options that are currently under review and to give you a bit of a feel for materials, colour and texture. So what we've got here is just a computer visualisation of the end of Hurstway Walk from Bramley Road. Uh, and on the right hand side, we've got some of the different materials that we've been looking at. So we've got glass re reinforced concrete. We've actually got quite a lot of the, these samples coming to the event on Thursday. So please do come down and have a look at them, have a feel. I mean, we'd really like, like to get your feedback on colour and texture. Um, and underneath the glass reinforced concrete, we've got terracotta, um, which is another fired uh, clay product. Uh, so similar to brick and the whole the whole kind of uh, mantra, I think, for us has been about trying to complement the existing buildings and uh, the, the existing materials. Um, so next slide, please, Sean. So these are some of the colour palettes that we've been looking at at the moment. We think that these three could complement your buildings really nicely, but in very kind of varied ways, different ways. Um, so you can kind of see the, the, the glass reinforced concrete, the GRC, as uh, you can pigment it in a variety of different colour tones. Um, and in actual fact, the, the purples we find actually look really good against your, your bricks once they've been cleaned, of course. Um, and we're also looking at render, um, but we think that we can pull together a really nice palette that will complement your buildings. And we just want to get your, obviously, your input and, and, and what you think um, uh, really suits the walkways since you know them so well. We've actually done some patch testing the cleaning the brickwork on your buildings as well. Um, it's just the entrance ramp to Testerton, I believe we've done a bit of testing there, but we're actually going to be doing some more facade cleaning at the 411 Testerton pilot, and that will be adjacent to some of the windows that we've trialled in there as well. So we'd really like to get your feedback on that as well, because that will start to feed into that EWI process. Um, next slide, please, Sean. So this is kind of this just gives you a bit of an understanding about the different elements within the building facade. So we've got the uh, and we've we've this this image is a kind of it's a it's a smorgasbord of the different materials and how we could apply them to your facades. But you see right at the top, we've put the pigmented glass reinforced concrete. There's a variety of reasons for why we might recommend GRC up there, but most notably it's quite a robust material. Um, so with the interface with the terraces, it could actually be quite a good uh, move there. But as I say, we're not making that decision today. It's more about giving you an understanding of how the, the roof works have evolved and how this will tie in with the next stage of the, the construction process. Um, next slide. Thank you. So this is just this is almost just a recap of what we showed you at the last event in November. 
and just some more close ups of that uh, that parapet facing. So we've got um, sort of a, a ribbed or a ridged panel, um, which is shown here. Um, and yeah, as previously mentioned, you could pigment concrete in a variety of different colors. So we just this is more about kind of trialing and testing things uh, and get, getting your feedback. Next slide, please. And then this is with the terracotta um, and similarly, and kind of a, almost like a fluted uh, finish to that terracotta. You can actually go for some really beautiful glazes on the terracotta. Um, and we think that might be a, a little bit of, well, I think I, I think our colleague Paul called it jewellery for the building. I don't know, people people might not, not like that idea, but it's just, it's something that it would really set off high quality, good materials um, and probably suit your bricks quite nicely. Um, next slide, please. And then the final slide just here was the, the the kind of the third option. This is this is very much the sort of the, the different different formats of terracotta because you can actually get them in what are called baguettes because they're slim slim profiled uh, elements that you kind of you, you they don't come in wider panels they're narrower um, and you can also do tiles as well. So all of these we're looking at at the moment. We'd really like to get your feedback. Um, next slide. Thanks. And then finally. Um, just on that that parapet element, uh, we have been looking at the railing finishes, um, and we have we've explored a variety of different options. The decision has been made to use a weighted system, uh, so as to not potentially compromise the water resistance of the sides of the roof. Um, now, you might have noticed uh, earlier on in the presentation the 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 diagrams that Alva showed, they've actually, they still indicate that um, fixed railing. And that's because this decision has been made quite recently. But what we are trying to do, and what we've got shown here, is look at ways in which we don't necessarily have to go with a quite a bog standard weighted rail system, whether we can elevate it slightly so that it's got something similar to these, these fin bar railings potentially. But again, we'd really like to get your feedback on that. Um, we think that, you know, it's really important to have a nice crowning element to this building, um, but more crucially to make sure that it's got, you know, really, really good waterproofing line on it. And there's no danger of any kind of future issues with leaks because we know that that's a that's a big issue for these buildings. Um, and within the railings, in terms of choices as well, we'd like to get your input on what kind of colours you think would work well. Um, you know, this this decision probably does have to be made in advance of the um, uh, the, the the parapet facings, um, but we can yeah we can maybe talk about that a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, so next slide, please. Sean, I will hand over to you now. Hi Thanks. everyone. Uh, so this is a view from inside the communal areas, looking up at the roof lights. Um, this is what you're going to see, and what we want to know is your preferred choice for what the finish of the structure would be. So we've shown two images here. One on the left is just a simple grey colour um, that could go with the, the windows in the exterior if, if the choice is to make those grey as well. Or on the right hand side, we could go for a simple white colour similar to what is there at the moment, but the new structure is going to be much more refined and uh, beautiful and simple um, compared to what the existing roof lights and AOVs are doing. Um, and another choice we want you to make uh, or give us your preferred preference on is uh, this rear wall. So these flanks, as we refer to them, this is a new insulated wall here, and it's got a new fire rigid glazing in, in, in the centre of that. Uh, there's two choices here. One is to keep it as a clear glass, or the other option is to do it as a, as a frosted glass system. Uh, we know that a lot of people have already frosted it over, obscured it in different ways to have that privacy. So uh, we would like to know what, what you think works best for both uh, residents inside the communal areas looking up to so the ones that use or have those terraces at the top level. And this is a image going outside the building, looking back from the upper terraces, one of these private terraces. Uh, that's the roof light. Or sorry, the glazing, fire rate glazing at the back. Uh, above that at the back is a new access walkway. It's hidden here by this new parapet that will come later. Uh, and as a result of that, 
uh, we're, we're replacing this new pergola structure uh, and these screens as well. These screens are going to be new weighted screens. So at the bottom, we'll have a sort of a seat or it's opportunity for planting. Uh, there's different finishes we're going to look at and show you later in the presentation in a few slides for what that pattern could be. And then at the top, then there's a simple steel structure and it's going to span across between the two uh, terraces. Um, and we've got some options for what that uh, the, the the central area can, could be whether it's some wire or it's glazing or it's a pre-slay system so we'll show you some images of that in a second um generally we're also looking for what your preference in the color for this is, is it could be again a simple galvanized slightly shiny uh or a darker gray ppc just a very hard wearing finish uh, or a lighter gray ppc but yeah we'd like to know what your thoughts are on this and these are the, some of the options we've developed for the, um, the the infill of that steel structure. So one is again a simple cable system. Another one is glazing because we know that a lot of residents have covered uh, their areas, so it will give you that bit of shelter from the rain and from the sun. The third option would be the breeze lay, which would be a simple structure of uh, steel or aluminium elements. We've done some pros and cons just to kind of weigh up the options here. So, you know, the first one is it's very light, easy maintenance. Uh, it's good for cl uh, climbing plants. Um, the second one, the glazing is a little bit more maintenance than that because you have to clean that glass, um, but it gives you that protection from the rain, so which is quite nice using those seats. And then the third option is the breeze delay. So that's uh, it's very good for keeping the sun off the terraces, um, but it does restrict you slightly from those um, living rooms, from those patio doors onto the living rooms. So next is the options for the terrace screens. So those screens between the homes, and we want to know your collective decision um, on that. So we've done three here. Um, it could be a collective decision by block. That could be an option. Um, and uh, so you and your neighbor won't get to choose different options. It has to be the same choice. And we've brought a model. We will be bringing a model along on Thursday. So we've done the different uh, screen options. Um, and so please come down and see it. And we can discuss it and see what you think. And back to Alva now to talk about the uh, access and maintenance. Uh, hi again. Yeah, the, the the glamorous aspect of it. Um, I think this this is something that we just wanted to to get your thoughts on. Um, I don't, if if anyone has has gone up the cat ladder, which is is currently located, Sean, if you just point to the the image, it, it's it's near the the Grenfell Walk end of of each walkways. Um, and we went up there on a quite a sunny day recently, and it can be a bit hairy. So just to 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 know it, it's immediately directed. This this photo on the bottom there shows it, its proximity to to the new to the entrance. So there's an entrance door into into three three two, um, and you unlock the unlock the gate, the protection. You walk up the ladder, and then you, as you're hanging, you unlock a a, a, a lock. Which you then have to open it, open another um, protective uh, layer, and then walk up the cat ladder. So we feel that there could be an improvement on this, um, and also with the new fire rated glazing, um, as as Sean can point out there, we just thought it was an opportunity to provide a, a safer access for the roof, not only um, for the maintenance team, but also if and when the residents need to to go up there at, at uh, any point. Next slide, please. So what we're looking at is is actually moving the the access to the kind of southern sections of the blocks. Um, the atrium to the south, uh, you're probably all aware, is, is a little bit larger than than the other uh, roof lights going up through the blocks. And um, there's also uh, less um, entrance doors fr from those those uh, atrium as well. And um, so what we're looking at is actually introducing a, a, a safer, whether it be a spiral staircase or, or the next slide will show you an alternative, giving a kind of protected or kind of more long term access um, for, for everyone that needs to go up onto the roof. Um, it, you can see by the image, it, it can be quite a, a, an interesting um, staircase. At the moment, we're looking at a spiral solution, which could be quite a lovely uh, option. Next slide, please. Um, or the other option is a more kind of straightforward, kind of linear um, staircase option. Both would, would provide a, a safe and, and secure access to the roof. And we feel that kind of a long term solution to what is at the moment a bit of a, a hairy um, access. Uh, next slide, please. 
and I think there's handing back to Caroline. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Elva. Um, so the Meet the Contractor engagement event, I think this is probably likely to happen in the next sort of six to eight weeks. We will obviously get uh, in touch with you all and let you know uh, when it's scheduled for. But I think this is a really crucial opportunity for um, for you guys to be able to sit down with um, the preferred contractor, who we don't know we don't know who it is yet. Um, but just to maybe fire some questions, because there's only so much that we can confirm as regards the uh, the, the the duration of the works and and the, the kind of the the intricacies of maybe some of the um, temporary work such as like scaffolding and um, the the sort of the, the the level of access required to your homes we have of course given them a very clear steer that we that the whole mantra of the project is to limit disruption on residents as much as possible but also then you know installing high performance high quality materials you know really really well designed and well uh, delivered um, interventions as well so you know so there's a bit of a careful balance there uh, so during that session with the contractor as i mentioned that we'll be able to discuss the duration of the works with you so they'll be able to provide you with a timeline um, and we'll also want to especially for the um the residents who live up in the top level units or sorry homes um the duplexes up at roof level this will probably be even more relevant for you as is probably all of today's presentation because these are your terraces it's your adjacent glazing they're your pergolas they're your terrace screens um, so that it will be more relevant to you now it will also so we can also cover during that session the, the any need for the contractor to access uh, your home Alva mentioned earlier in the presentation about the upgrade of rainwater pipes and um, soil vent pipes now that is something that we're discussing with the with the contractors at the moment so we just need to understand with them exactly what would be required to replace those those bits of pipe and how that interface might might come within the realm of your flat so we just need we just need to have that clarity with them and we can sit down with you guys and then have a bit more of a um, round the table discussion about it I think also the contract access to your private terraces is going to be really crucial there will be a period of time where we do have to gain kind of access to your terrace where you won't be able to use it and I think that that there is a that there's a reality to that we also need to think quite clearly and carefully about some of you have got the most beautiful terraces up there you've you've got you know obviously quite a few of you are quite green fingered lovely pots put you know and plants and we want to make sure that we protect them so it might be a good opportunity to discuss that with contractors as well how are how are they going to safeguard that do we need to look at you know temporarily um put, putting them in in other parts of the the estate to protect the 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 plants from any kind of emerging construction work uh so scaffolding in sorry scaffolding on and around the roofs will um, will we'll, um, they'll be able to give a bit more clarity of, about that and there might even need to be some scaffolding in the communal areas but again we're we're working with them to try and see if that can be minimized kept to uh, the bare minimum and then finally, one of the most important things, how the contractors will be able to keep your, you safe during the works. I mean, we, we are, you know, we want to keep everyone obviously in their homes. And uh, but that means that we've just got to work really carefully with the contractor to make sure that all of their interface with you is completely safe. And, you know, it's, um, yeah. Uh, so it, it's, it's more about sort of your, the, the, the impact on your day to day lives, I think, and that's that's something we'd like to cover during the session. Great. Thanks, Caroline. So we've got a few um, comments and questions in the chat. Um, the first from um, Bashir and um, Bashir likes the cream grey um, palette. So and, and Natasha as well, so which is great. So we've got feedback on color scheme, and Natasha, thanks for your comments um, regarding. I presume this is because the existing 
the the windows, um, you know, the AOVs and the rift lights are currently stock open. So we are aware of this issue and um, I'm speaking, I'm liaison with the repairs and maintenance team. So we're going to get people down to just come and have a look at, um, you know, the communal space and just ensure that it's, it's safe for people to just walk around. Um, so we'll come back to you on that. Um, and there's also another question here for, um, so Linda's put uh, something on behalf of one of the walkways residents. Will residents be able to have um, individual choice for terrace upgrades, Caroline? Um, well, so the pergolas, absolutely. I think Sean mentioned earlier in the presentation just about the different kind of infill sections, which we think is kind of it's a major bonus. Um, because we know that within your existing pergolas, quite a few people have um, put boards on top of their pergolas to create their own covered spaces, which is why we thought option two was quite a good one to offer up. Um, and then similarly, we've got the, the sunshade, the Brie Soleil as option three, it's very much that's about kind of almost a reworking of what you've got at the moment, only in actual fact it will work better because the the, the beams are running in the in the right direction for the for the sun for the sun now. And then wires as well, because as I mentioned, quite a few of you look to be fairly green fingered. As regards the rest of the, I mean, as Sean mentioned, the screens, because you share your screen with your neighbour, uh, we do have to have a collective choice on the screens. Now it could be uh, on a sort of you know the whole of Hearst way votes on having their mm. their preferred screen the whole of Teston the whole of Barrington so we could break it down so it's per block but we need to be quite careful it's not going to be practical to get two properties to vote on the screen for obvious reasons because <laughs> it could be a 50 50. Um, so we we have to have that kind of that collective choice on screens as regards the the actual terrace finishes we're not going to be doing the terrace works as part of the that the actual floor finish we're not going to be doing that as part of these roof works so we will be discussing you that with you during the uh, the phase two engagement uh, we are trialing um some finishes within the 411 testing so we'd love to if you guys want once that's finished you can come and see see it and have a look at the i think it's an aludex system that we've gone with in the end it's aluminium decking yeah. yeah so um we think that's that's gonna be quite quite successful um really love to get your feedback on that but yeah in terms of the choice of materials i think that we're probably it's going to be another collective choice in that we will ask you to to maybe vote on what would be your preferred but it would be as the walkway for the walkways in general rather than individuals. So Michelle's got a hand up. Uh, Michelle, do, do you want to ask a question? <laughs> yeah. Hi, yeah. I've Hi. Got, I've got several. OK, um, brilliant. <laughs> so, so you answered um, things like duration of work and stuff. You, you answered. So that's that's one thing. So the first question is, um, would the balconies need to be completely cleared? Because as you said, people have got plants and tables and whatever do they need to be completely cleared um so i i would imagine because in actual fact a lot of the work is focused at the rear of your balconies where we've got the new bridge going in and also the pergolas coming out and in actual fact your your terraces are actually quite deep so it might be practical to load quite a lot of the furniture towards the outer the outer wall line However, Michelle, I think that this is one of those things that would be really good to pick up with the contractors, because I think then we need to, we can get a bit more clarity. We can maybe work up a bit of a plan with Lankwest neighbourhood team as to sort of safe storage yeah. for your plants. Because in actual fact, construction dust is not, it's not particularly great for a lot of plants. And in actual fact, it might be better to maybe we can liaise with with Robert on this um, for me and see mm -hmm. if, if there might be there might be a practical location for yeah. all of people's 
plants. Um, and just to add that, it's not like, you know, all of the terrorist works will be carried out around the same time. It's going to be done sequentially. Yeah. Say, for example, they move from one end of the block to the other. So I don't think would require all residents to move their items all around the same time. But we will notify residents in advance so everyone is aware of, you know, when the works will be carried out um, on their terraces. So, yeah. OK, um, another question. Um, I like option two because I would like um, my terrace to, uh, I like the word terrace, by the way. I've just called it a patio before. <laughs> so I like the word terrace. Sounds posh. <laughs> Bit grander, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I like option two where it's, it's covered, but I mm. wanted to ask why it's only covered at the fence side oh, and right. not the side you yeah. step yeah. Very, very good question, Michelle. So the reason why we've done that is the, the the parapet facing, bearing in mind that that's coming coming at a later date, but it's what's known as a rain screen panel. And um, you have to be able to uh, ventilate it and it has to be able to drain down the back of it. So subsequently, you can't seal up against it. Now, what we could do is we could extend that glazed over uh, uh, area, covered area, over so it's quite close to that parapet facing but it mustn't touch it because if it okay. touches it it will create problems in the future um just to just to maybe pick up on this um point in a bit more detail though that glaze covered area we do have some reservations about it because because of the glass now obviously our uh, you know our brief is very clear non-combustible materials throughout where possible the only thing is this, and I think Sean might mentioned it, they are going to be a bit of a devil to keep clean because we know that there's a lot of pigeons on the estate at the moment, which we're yeah. trying to deal with, by the way. Um, but it it might end up being a bit of an eyesore as a result. We did actually discuss with Bimmy and James about umbrellas, but again, we're struggling because of that non-combustibility target. Um, so this is something that we're going to look at more closely in the in the coming weeks and months, especially with contractors as well, just to see if there might be an alternative solution there. But I think it is it, you want you still want light to come through it as well. Otherwise, we'd probably be looking at maybe a kind of a panelized system. But I think the natural light is pretty crucial, isn't it? OK, thank you. Um... Considering the works are probably due to start at the end or towards the end of the summer, right when the school holidays are, um, obviously people that have children, I know there are lots of respite offers, but there are anything for children. Because if they're going to be in their flats with all the banging and crashing going on above their heads. It's a really it's a really good point, uh, Michelle. I don't think that we've we've spent a lot of time discussing it as of yet, but we will. It's a really good point. It's something for us to take away from the meeting. And I think for the maybe for the next contractor session, that's where we can maybe Absolutely. discuss this in a bit more detail. I think it's also maybe worth and for me, I think I'm right in saying it's worth bearing in mind that a bit of time will be spent gearing up for the work. Yes. Um, and yes. I think as for me previously mentioned, Michelle, the works, the works will kind of go sequentially down the building. So whilst there might be a couple of households in that first tranche, which is in August, in actual fact, quite a lot of the works will actually take place over the winter months and into spring next year. Um, I mean, we, you know, ideally speaking, we'd like to get your, your terraces back to you as quickly as possible. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's uh, there, there will be a bit of a rolling process to it. OK, um, I've got two, two more questions. So my my shared balcony is with a non-resident leaseholder who has actually covered their balcony and has a door at the end. Would that get removed and they have to have what everybody else is having, if you see what I mean? In short, yes, I believe. I mean, but for me, James, yes, please. It will, <laughs> yes, it will have to be removed for the works to, to be carried out, yes. And we will give you notice. We will give you probably months notice um, before we carry out the work. But um, yes, um, all items in the terraces will have to be removed for the works to be carried out. 
Okay. And my last question, I promise, my last question, um, with the the parapets and everything going on with the roofs and the different colours and and textures and everything, it it will be. I mean, I know it depends on people's choice, but it will be an ideal opportunity to make the blocks look different. For I'm thinking about because the blocks look so much the same, people get lost, confused. So if they were different, even just different colours on the roofs, it's easier to describe, like for deliveries and things like that. Absolutely. And I think that that um, that will come into play when we do the phase two engagement, Michelle. So I think it's a it's something what I, I know. I think I've I've had conversations with you specifically about this previously, mm. and I think it's a really yeah. it's a really good idea. Okay. Um, Thank thanks. You. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Michelle. Um, Caroline, just on Pergola um, covered, you know, the material um, coverings. I've got another question here. Mm. From um, um, one of the walkways residents, what material will be will the covered terrace be made from? I think you already mentioned glazed. It's going to be a glazed material. Will the samples be um, available in the showroom in Unit Twenty Nine? Are we exploring other materials? Um, uh, yeah. I think we've we've actually got a bit of work to do on this um, mm. with the contractors first, and me before we can maybe have those samples in place to show the residents. Um, but I mean, it's a really it's, it's a really good question. Um, I think that we we just maybe need to evaluate whether there's any alternative materials out there like like glass that will behave like glass and non combustible like glass, but won't necessarily have the same implications with the pigeons. Um, so, yeah, I think um, we will get back to you if that's OK. Sure, thanks. And the last question here. Um, I don't want to be completed and completely separated from my neighbour. Can you accommodate that? Uh, well, yes. I mean, as long as <laughs> no, no. I, I mean, to be honest, actually, the the way the the railings have been, and I don't know, Sean, if you want to maybe go back to the top of like the very top, the the CGI image of the um the roof works. Sorry, there, there. That's perfect. You might be able to see that the um, the screen actually drops in height, and that is for the very. I mean, it's partially because we what we need to restrain those ones which kind of sit further back on the terrace. We need to restrain them up against that kind of that H-shaped structure, which is up at okay. Pergo at the height. But the 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 ones further out, we we did want to have that. OK, you know, you want a bit of privacy. You sit back towards the, the rear of the terrace. If you want to go and have a cup of tea with your neighbour and uh, have a bit of a natter, then there's also that opportunity there. So it's got it's got best of both worlds. That's what that's the way we've tried to design it. So Caroline, will it be possible for one resident to sort of move from one side of the terrace to the other to have a cup of tea with? Your oh, we haven't we haven't designed that, but that said, Bimmy, they are weighted, so you could just stop them at in line with the the edge of the pergola, and then those those weighted screens, those three at the end, they, they, right. we don't need to install them. Um, sure. I mean, it's, so I, I think that's lovely. It's lovely to hear that you guys get on so well as neighbours. That um, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but yeah, that, in actual fact, it's got that degree of flexibility, the design, so that's good. Fantastic. And uh, so Michelle's just added another comment in the chat. We also have a squirrel problem. Uh, the pergola is made from wood. Um, I believe they're metal. Yeah, they um, are. As the squirrels um, chew timber at the moment, it's the current ones. Yeah. Yeah, it's solid steel. I don't think they'll I don't think they'll be having a crack at that. <laughs> Great. Are there any other questions, comments, suggestions? Um, let's see. Someone's yeah, I have a question. But Natasha. Yeah. Yes. Hi, Hi so I think my question seemed to have been missed out. It was the first one. Um on the windows and the roofs, um, while it's like it's going to be lovely to see different ones, there's a big issue now. The mats that are down are not big enough to hold the rain that's coming in. And there are a lot of vulnerable residents. We have blind residents, elderly residents with walking sticks, and we're constantly complaining that there's not enough mats and being told it's four to eight hour wait. Um, 
Last week, I think I phoned in about six times to request more mats to be put down because myself and one of the neighbours, some guy that lives in Barrington, we was actually mopping it up. And coming coming into, we're going to be getting a lot of rain before the windows are done. Are the mats that are placed down going to be covering more square footage of what they are currently to make sure residents are safe? Yeah, um, yes, that's something we we can definitely put in place. So I will speak to the repairs and maintenance team, uh, Natasha. They are aware of this issue because we discussed this in in the health and safety meeting we had today. So I'll speak to the team and I will come back to you as soon as that as possible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the second point was just to touch on what Michelle said about um, the kids uh, during winter. There are going to be quite a lot of kids studying for their GCSEs. Come spring, they're going to be doing their GCSEs. What time are the works going to be carried out? Because when they're coming home from school, they're going to have to be practising for GCSEs the next day, which could possibly affect them mm. revising and stuff like that with all this work going on. Yeah, so but I, Bumi, I don't know. I don't know if you want to talk a bit about respite um, yes, and um, noisy working hours. So I think Linda would have the latest information on respite. I believe there is a family and friends um, respite option. Linda. So this is something that we'll be looking at on a case by case basis. Um, what we can do if you or the resident in question contacts the team, um, we have a resident liaison officer who will be happy to help with you one on one. Hmm. Okay, thanks, Linda. And and Natasha, just um, as I mentioned earlier, um, in in terms of the delivery, the way the construction work is going to be carried out, it's not going to be all done at the same time. So we're going to move, start at one end of the block and work our way downwards, or at both ends. But we will notify residents in terms of, you know, noisy hour, hours and you know disruption. So you will be notified in a, well in advance of the works. Yeah. Natasha, what we'll I think what we'll try and do with the contractors um, when we have that session, we'll 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 obviously brief them ahead of time, and we'll ask them to put together a bit of a breakdown of how they see that happening, mm -hmm. so that they give you a okay. bit of an idea about you know the amount of weeks that they'll set they'll spend on exactly. one individual terrace, and yeah. how because they tend to they tend to t try and leapfrog. I think that's the that's the well I don't know if that's the yeah. official terminology, but and that might give you a bit more clarification so that we can actually tell people a bit more specifically mm -hmm. when the work is actually yeah. going to start on their specific terrace but I think it's also it is also about being mindful of the people who are further down the block um, so so that as you say because we we appreciate it's, we know that it's not just those upper upper flats it's also people who live in the lower ones it's still noise it's still disturbance and we need to make sure that we've adequately programmed everything out and everyone's got that that safe space especially for kids uh, undertaking their exams okay um can i ask one quick more yes, yes. the scaffoldings that will be put up um when the work is being carried out um are they going to be made safe and secure where people can't climb them because right now that doesn't seem to be the case on this estate so um, we spent quite a bit of time, Tasha, talking with um, some of the the subcontractors who would do this type of work. And we came up with a number of scenarios about trying to span the scaffolding just at the high levels of the roofs. Now, we still need the contractors to come forward with their proposals because it's really it, it is their responsibility. However, we've already kind of fed them some strategies about limiting the amount of scaffold that's in and around your estate and that everything needs okay. to be complete no, so so safe um especially for yeah because you know it's a climbing frame for kids isn't it um and okay. uh we, we just want to yeah i think we're trying to limit the amount that's extending down to the ground if possible and okay. also crucially that any scaffold that goes in those communal spaces will be you know, we'll we'll be spending a lot of time analysing that before it gets the go ahead. OK, thank you. Thanks, Natasha. Um, any other questions? No. 
Right, I think we can just go right to the e-newsletter slide and... Um, I was going to say, that I think there's a question there from a, Ma a Madeline. Um, oh, yes, yes. That's... Um, I can go, I can answer this one if you want. It's, it's already yes. out the question. Totally Will the roof insulation impact the heat of all the flats in the building? Uh, there's an issue with flats being extremely hot due to the old heating system. So will the insulation make that worse or better, especially in the summer? So it should make it better. It should reduce overheating because there's more insulation on the top. So less heat will come through the roof to the inside. Mm -hmm. um, but it'll, it'll be part of the other works as well. The main refurb, refurb works where we'll be doing glazing that has uh, is able to resist overheating. And we're going to be addressing the uh, issues of the heating system by replacing that eventually as well, um, because we know that a lot of heat leaks from that. A lot of the pipes aren't insulated properly. So um, yes, about the roof and the other measures that will come in the future will uh, help with the overheating issue that exists as well. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Sean. Um, any other questions, comments, suggestions? No? So yeah, I think we can go straight to the e-newsletter um, I present that. There was one slide, I think, just before um, it was about the condition surveys, which I'll just briefly yes. mention. So as part of the roof works, um, we need to do some preparations in advance and we need to do some surveys. So these are called condition surveys. And uh, it means that um, Thomas, who we work with, he's a sustainability consultant, um, he needs to visit um, your homes that uh, it's to it's to take some notes to understand if there's any issues with the building primarily so issues with damp or mold so we can design solutions for that in the main refurb works he's also looking at how the heating works again looking at overheating and issues with that how the ventilation works to see if it's adequate um, it's just to give us a picture about how everything uh, in the building is working um, and so this is something we, we we need to do, but we want to discuss it with you first. And I, I believe that Lankwest team are going to phone around and uh, discuss it with everyone. Um, so just to keep you aware of that. OK, so e-newsletter, Bimmy. Yeah, so um, I wanted to let you know about the e-newsletter for residents um, of um, the Lancaster West Estates. It's the best way to keep in touch and, and to keep up to date with all the refurb news on the estate and on your block. So you can either scan the QR code or follow the link in the chat, which um, I believe um, Linda put it in the chat earlier. Uh, and there are also posters on all the notice boards around the estate with the QR code, or you can find it in um, our Instagram bio, which is Lancaster West Neighbourhood Team. When you subscribe, please indicate which block you live in so we can send you updates for your block, particularly important if you don't want to miss out on the reef of news for, for the walkways. Um, so a recording of this meeting will be um, going up on our YouTube channel and also embedded in our W11 app, which uh, you can download from the App Store or on our website. So if you do have any further questions about this presentation or comments, then please um, get in touch with the Lancaster West um, neighborhood team. And um, thanks to everyone once again, and um, see you soon. Thanks all. Thanks everyone. See thanks you on everyone. Thursday if you can make it. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Have a nice evening. Bye.